Hello my loves and welcome to my channel. My name is Carrie and I like to make cleaning and homemaking videos and I have this video jam-packed with lots of cooking, cleaning, and organizing so if that's what you're looking for today you've come to the right place. The other thing about me is that I like to eat and I like to feed my family well too so I'm sharing a few recipes that I know you'll love in today's video and I'm also getting ready to host my father-in-law's birthday party so I made my very first homemade cake. I also made some carnitas for the party and I can't wait to show you how that turned out so make sure you stay tuned. And if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much again for clicking on this video. I live in California with my husband of 12 years and our two kids and I just love making motivational cleaning videos and bettering my space. So. If that's something you're interested in, I would love for you to consider subscribing to my channel. If you're not new, I'm so glad to have you back and I hope this video gets you motivated and inspired. Let's jump on into it. Okay, so I am making my husband lunch real quick. Uh, it's about 8.40. I dropped the kids off at school, came back, have been cooking this bacon and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a video of this because this, first of all, I've never made this lunch, but um, we've been on like a wrap kick, and so I'm making him actually a cop salad wrap um, with bacon, hard boiled eggs, I got black forest ham, some iceberg, I have tomato, I have red onion, um, and so yeah, he's gonna swing by. He went to a job down the street, and then he's gonna come by and pick this up, and I'll have it all ready for him. Um, and then I'll have to empty the dishwasher, and then I have the dishes that I'll need to take care of um, and clean the sink possibly, but I do have to get to work, so. Say hi to Finny. Good morning, Finny. Good morning. Hi. Are you getting jealous? Kitty's jealous. They get jealous of each other. He says, don't pet her. To tell you guys about the serrated knife that I got, it was just like in the as seen on TV section of Walmart or something like that, but it is the best knife for cutting tomatoes. It doesn't squish them, it just cuts right through and it is the best. And actually, um, I prefer that more for my tomatoes than my shun, which I'm using right now, which is not an inexpensive knife. It is a very uh, high quality chef's knife. Um, so I'm kind of spoiled with my knives. My husband really enjoys collecting knives and he actually bought the kitchen knives um, and now I'm spoiled. So when I go to other people's houses, I sometimes get frustrated with the lack of quality knives that they have in their kitchen. But um, as you can see, that serrated knife was also really great for shredding up lettuce. Um, and I'm just gonna blot that dry so it doesn't get all wet in the, while it's in the wrap um, because my husband, he's not gonna be eating this until a little bit later today. <laughs> husband really liked the cop salad wrap um, the only thing is, is that the ranch didn't come out great I didn't put enough seasoning in it so that was kind of a dud um, but I'm just wrapping that up for him so it'll stay nice and cool until he gets here and then I'm just gonna eat the scraps for breakfast um, and I'm making myself a BLT because we didn't have any more wraps and um, this was gonna be my lunch I was just gonna make it ahead of time but I ended up eating it for breakfast because it looks so good <laughs> So this is what I'm having for breakfast. It's nine now. Um, I'm just gonna scarf this down so I can um, clean up. I was gonna save the produce and have a, like a BLT for lunch, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna eat it now, cause whatever, right? I mean, it's healthy. It's a bacon sandwich. I mean. And then for my husband's wrap, I made homemade ranch. It's just settling so it can thicken up, but you use mayonnaise and we always buy this. Like I used to buy the packets, now I just get this because you could sprinkle this on chicken, on vegetables, make like a ranch chicken in the oven. You can make dressing, you can make dip. Like I love this stuff. Um, you could even put it on your popcorn, ranch flavored popcorn. Um, oh, sorry, my refrigerator is beeping.
after emptying the dishwasher, I also needed to put away some of the dishes that I hand washed, including this cast iron, like, it's like for smash burgers. Um, I totally messed up the night before and I had it like heating on the cast iron pan that I have. And then I went and picked it up without any, any protection and I burned the crap out of my hand. So I couldn't do the dishes the night before, but my hand was feeling much better this morning. And so I was able to get all that taken care of. I'm glad it wasn't as bad as it could have been because it was really hot. Um, but I barely touched it for a second. Just like oh, my hand, I pretty much just had to go to bed the night before. Um, and next I'm going to clean my sink. Um, I always use Barkeeper's Friend for my sink unless they're out at the store and um, I just love the way it cleans. I do have a stainless steel sink. Before this I had porcelain and that's when I got turned on to Barkeeper's Friend because it will get any stains out of your porcelain sinks or tubs or anything like that. So that's definitely one of my holy grail products. <laughs> After I was done cleaning the sink, I needed to go around and wipe down all the water that I splashed everywhere and the bacon grease that splattered everywhere. I need to get like one of those net thingies that you put over the pan so the grease doesn't go everywhere, but I just forget and I need to put it on my list so I don't, because if it's not on my list, then I don't remember. Um, but I am using my Norwex e-cloth to wipe everything down today. I love it because it only uses water, um, no harsh chemicals, and it does a really good job. It's super efficient, it cleans very well, and you can also move from surface to surface. You can wipe down pretty much anything with it. I also have their glass polishing cloth, which also works very well. Um, I would say I prefer that over my favorite Sprayway glass cleaner. Um, and I use it as much as I can. Now sometimes I need to bust out the heavy duty chemicals for some deeper cleaning and when things are just, you know, it's been like a while, maybe like a month where I've just been cleaning with <laughs> the Norwex. Um, I just need to get in there with some more heavy duty chemicals. But I actually did a video recently and I'll link it down below where I went over and rated um, different popular cleaning products and what's in them. And it was really surprising actually to see the effect that they have on our bodies. And I do have some health conditions. I have asthma, I have eczema, and they're exacerbated by the strong chemicals. So I like to clean with the water as much as possible. Um, also, I've tried the homemade vinegar solution and I just can't do it because the smell it, I don't like the smell, <laughs> but I'm moving up into my bedroom now. I washed my sheets and I'm putting those back on. 
and the dust is still a problem. My husband thinks it's our um, goose down feather comforter, and so he wants me to put that away and see if it helps, but I think it's the ducts that need to be professionally cleaned. But just ignore my room, because it's pretty much a disaster, not in terms of like tidiness, except for my husband's dresser over there, but I just really need to come in here and redecorate, but you know things are expensive. Everything's expensive right now, food and all that. So those extras are kind of like the bottom of my priority list right now. But it's definitely on my list to do new curtains, get new furniture. Like I need all new everything in here. So just ignore the aesthetics or lack thereof. <laughs> Okay, so it's 9.21 now and it's been a long day. I cleaned my car, I baked this cake. This is homemade German chocolate cake for my um, father-in-law's birthday and we're gonna freeze this before we make the icing um, in a couple of days. But it's a late dinner for my husband and I. And I have this kale. I just chopped this, this is like extra from before. Like I had bought in fresh kale and we just had extra so I chopped it up and froze it. I always recommend doing that with veggies when you can. And then tortellini, I have mild Italian sausage, half and half I have um, some leftover tomato paste and we're going to make a tortellini soup. So I'm heating my pan up here and yeah, it's going to be really good even though it's freaking 100 degrees today <laughs> but now that it's 920 at night. This is actually going to come together very quickly, and this is a Macy Blackwell recipe. I think um, I just got it from her TikTok, but yeah. So I just had to buy the tortellini and the sausage, really inexpensive, and I had this left over. And then, yeah, I can show you guys tomorrow, or no, in two days when I do the um, icing for this German chocolate cake. I've never made a cake out, like, besides box cake. I've made box cake, but this is, like, homemade. So I'm very excited. And I didn't film that because my daughter helped me. So she's very proud. Oh, and let me show you. <laughs> it looks wrong, but um, these are cake balls. So when we cut the cake, like it r rose and then we cut the top off and we made it into these cake balls for the kids that don't like coconut. I don't like coconut. So I was like thinking of myself mostly when I <laughs> plan these, but I'm gonna get, we chilled them and now we're gonna freeze them. And then I'm going to get some uh, melting chocolate and then turn these into little cake balls. And then we have sprinkles, so um, that'll be just on the side for the kids during the party if they want to have that instead of cake. And then we'll have ice cream too. the dishwasher for the second time today like I said I did a bunch of other stuff around the house I baked the cake I cleaned my car but um, I just don't always get the chance to film those types of things especially if my kids are helping me um, because I don't like to put footage of them up online and so if you ever notice that my footage is like disjointed or anything like that that's why um, and also that's why I couldn't film those things for you but I had to share this recipe because the soup was so freaking good it actually reminded me a lot of Zupa Toscana, which I am very familiar with because I worked at Olive Garden for a whole decade and pretty much ate Toscana or chicken yoki soup like every day <laughs> that entire time and all through my pregnancies. But um, it pretty much has the same ingredients. It has tortellini, of course, instead of the, t the potatoes. It doesn't have any bacon in it like Toscana does. And also it has the tomato element to it. But it has a very similar flavor profile and we loved it. So shout out to Macy Blackwell again for that idea. I don't know if she has a YouTube channel. I'm gonna look and I'll link it down below if she does. But I do see her on TikTok all the time. So you should definitely go check her out. She has a ton of homemaking and cooking inspiration and I just love her. But even my daughter loved the soup. And while she didn't have any for dinner on this night since she was already in bed, 
she did have a few bowls in the days after so I will definitely be making this one again and I know it's pretty late to be eating but my son is nine and he's incredibly picky and so half the time he doesn't eat what I make for dinner anyway and so many nights we just feed the kids earlier and then we'll wait until later to eat our dinner um it just things have calmed down by then and we just can enjoy our time together and then i'm also making a caesar salad for the side i had some of that iceberg lettuce that i used in the wraps earlier and then i'm using the brianna's uh caesar dressing which was very good and just adding some croutons and some fresh parmesan cheese which i'll also use to top the soup with and voila it's all coming together it does have the half and half uh, I know Tuscan uses heavy whipping cream, but this soup, I just, you guys, you have to make it. Even though I said it was 100 degrees, like I love soup <laughs> and this is definitely a keeper. I'm adding the kale in last so it can keep a little bit of its crunch. But like I said, if I ever have leftover produce that I know I'm not going to use before it goes bad, I will chop it up and freeze it so I can use it later. I also have another bag of kale still from the same bunch of kale that I bought just a couple months ago. Um, but I do this also with rice, beans, sauces. I have shredded chicken in my freezer right now. Also bones, <laughs> which you will see later. I keep a ham bone so I can make broth with it later. I just hate wasting money. So that's definitely a money saving tip for you. And I know these days, especially at the grocery store, we're trying to save money wherever we can. Moving on into the next day, I decided I needed to restock my cabinet here. This is actually a new cabinet. If you're new here, we recently... Um, had a water loss in our bathroom that's adjacent to the kitchen and it affected the kitchen and so everything was kind of remodeled here and um, repaired and so that's my kitty um, but I I didn't used to have this storage space in fact if you want to go back and watch some of our older videos you'll see we only had one full height cabinet here and that is our pantry and so this is all new space and I've kind of just admittedly thrown everything in there I really need to organize and I was keeping our paper towels outside and also our grocery bags, or not our grocery bags, our garbage bags. And so I wanted to move it inside. So I just decided to kind of fix everything here, go through it, declutter it, clean it out and organize it so that I could put like a lot of our paper goods here. So on the top shelf, I'm just putting our paper plates and um, napkins, plastic utensils and cups. And then I have the paper towels, bags below which we have to buy our bags living in California or we have to bring our own um, reusable bags and um, yeah like I said I just really need to work on organizing it's something I think about all the time but this is what it looks like before and then after I know it's not perfect I need to buy some organizing solutions but this is just what I have to work with for now so now I'm going to go around and finish cleaning the rest of the kitchen and this area to the side, the entryway. I gotta take that toilet paper upstairs, gonna dust and get this all tidied. This is the first thing you see when you walk in our house. So I definitely wanna make sure it's ready for our guests when they come over this weekend. another space that has really needed some attention lately and I have just been ignoring this but stuff keeps getting thrown on my husband's side <laughs> and while I don't normally touch his stuff and clean it or organize it I will definitely do that with his clothes and actually a lot of this weight stuff that we keep on the side of the closet is mine so I just wanted to get everything picked up wiped down and organized in here so I could also vacuum it's especially dusty in here because I like I said we've been having that duct issue meaning like the duct work in our house with the, the HVAC system. And with all the dust in our room, it's been nuts. We don't always close the doors like we should. But also my dog will hide in here if the door is open, as well as both of our cats. So I just need to get a handle on this so it's nice and fresh for me to go through later and do a declutter of all my clothes.
Don't mind but Beat Bobby Flay on in the background. I always have to have some sort of show or movie or video up on the TV, if not music. Actually, I prefer music most of the time because I don't get really like involved in it because sometimes when I'm watching a show or a movie, I'll, I won't want to leave the room. I want to like watch it and I get too distracted. I need like a little bit of distraction, but not too much. So music is normally what I am listening to. Um, if it's not a cleaning video and I like to listen to like all kinds of stuff. I have a very eclectic taste of music, but normally it's nineties or country when I'm cleaning. Um, but I like like reggae. I like hip hop. I like underground hip hop. I like pop. I like to sing. I like metal. <laughs> so I definitely listen to everything, but let me know what you like to listen to when you're cleaning down below. Um, I actually look for playlists on Spotify all the time. And I can never find like the perfect one for cleaning. So I'm considering making one. Maybe I'll share it sometime. Um, but I'm just putting things back into the closet. The shelf collapsed because it's actually missing one of those little peg thingies. I had to send my husband downstairs to get one for me. Um, thankfully, I had them on hand uh, because we had redone our hutch and I needed to buy new ones for that. And so I had some extra. Um, and I just really need to think about this space. And like I said, my organize, my organization skills, I have them, but I just don't have the materials needed to actually be successful. And like, I don't also always have the budget to buy like classic bins and stuff like that. I know people will be like, Oh, go to the dollar store. No, I don't want to. I'm, if I'm buying something, I kind of want it to be better quality like I don't want to have to keep buying stuff over and over again when I go to the dollar store I don't find stuff maybe it's just my area I don't find stuff that is great that I'm like yes this is perfect um I've bought in little cheap stuff from Target and like I don't love it so I'd rather wait and spend the money on something that I love than just buy something that's cheap that I'm not gonna like and it's gonna end up getting thrown away so I'm just gonna finish my side of the closet for now and this was disgusting. I got so much dust and crap off of the closet. Like I had to empty it halfway through. And that's because of all the cat hair and dog hair that was in here. I just really was like avoiding this for such a long time. And it just feels so good to have it clean. <laughs> dinner idea that I wanted to share with you guys. These are the Figure Korean Beef Bowls by Damn Delicious, which is my favorite food blog. You have to check her out. Her food is amazing. I love all of her recipes. And my husband's just topping it here with some spicy mayo that we made. We always just put it in like Ziploc bags and cut off the tip to squirt it like that because we don't have piping bags. <laughs> but, um, and then we're also following up with some of the Bashan's Japanese barbecue sauce. We got this at Costco and it is so good. We've been putting it on so much stuff. Um, actually we have a blackstone and so we used it for some tep on that we made one night but this is one of my favorite dinners my husband he doesn't love the ground meat as much it's like a texture thing for him so I was considering making um, lettuce wraps instead but I didn't have the lettuce and I had the rice so it is what it is he ate it like a champ and it is very tasty I highly recommend that one but now I'm moving on to the night before the party I need to finish making this cake I actually needed to make the frosting so that I could frost it tomorrow in the morning. And um, so this is a German chocolate cake, which is my father-in-law's favorite. And actually it's also my dad's favorite cake. And unfortunately my dad passed away in 2009. Um, so it was bittersweet making this. Uh, one, because I never made my dad this cake, even though it was his favorite. But like I said, this was like the first cake I ever really made. Um, but yeah, it just, and also it just, I really missed him. And so it, it made me think of him and, um, I was happy to make it for my father-in-law. You know, it's just like, you have a different perspective when you've lost someone that's close to you. But, um, yeah, we're making the chocolate frosting and then also the coconut frosting that goes on it. And we're going to put it in the fridge overnight. And I will say that if you do this technique, <laughs> that it does get super hard. So I actually had to microwave it for just like a little bit. Be careful because you don't want to ruin it. Um, just like a few seconds in the microwave was perfect for me to be able to spread it the next morning. I'm also going to link this recipe down below that I followed for the German chocolate cake. It has five stars. 
tons of reviews and it was very good we got so many compliments on this cake which was amazing because like i said it was the first cake we've ever made but they were like you should open a bakery <laughs> I just thought it was so funny, um, but it was very good. Even the kids that I thought were going to eat the cake balls, they were eating the German chocolate cake, and they loved it. Mixing the frosting was quite the workout, and no, I do not have a electric mixer. I do have, like, the handheld one, but I was like, screw it. Let's just use a whisk. We got our arm workout, and it was fine. Everything was fine. <laughs> I have for this coconut um, frosting mixture that I'm making is to be careful because it's pretty much a candy it's basically like you're making caramel and then adding in the pecans and the coconut so you definitely don't want that to burn or get too hot and even though I'm not a baker really I do love to cook and I have taken like food class <laughs> in school so I do know how to bake like I know you have to be super precise with your measurements and all that which is why I think if this came out so good so if you are not normally a baker like me definitely just make sure you follow the recipe to a T finish up these cake balls so that they can cool in the fridge and I can put them away and I just got the microwavable chocolate um, you can get at the store and again you want to make sure you don't burn the chocolate when you microwave it so check on it like every 15 to 20 seconds and give it a stir because it will burn very easily and I can't keep my husband out of here do you see him with his fingers like all over he was eating the frosting he's eating the chocolate <laughs> and then I just had these happy sprinkles on hand that I am gonna top the cake balls with and this is perfect this is definitely something to keep in mind if you make your own cakes maybe you already do this maybe this isn't a new thing but if you don't make cake balls with like the extra cake that you cut off then you definitely should I, I think I got at least a dozen and they were all eaten up Kitchen's clean. I got this new cake stand for tomorrow. I don't love it. it doesn't quite match, but it's the only one I could find. pretty late night this night I wanted to make sure everything was clean and then since we were having everyone over for lunch the next day I needed to start the carnitas in the middle of the night like at midnight so they would be ready in time for lunch so they take about 10 hours to cook um, I'm just giving everything in my living room a quick vacuum so it's nice and clean for our guests and then before I go to bed I'm going to get the pork started in the crock pot and I didn't really follow a recipe for this I just kind of looked at like a bunch of different recipes online and took what I liked and made it come together and it was so tasty and flavorful. You just need a pork shoulder, but mine is four pounds and that was plenty of meat for, wait, no, was it four or seven pounds? 
Maybe it was seven, no. Maybe it was four pounds. I think it was four pounds. It was plenty of meat for street tacos for, we had 16 people I think, 15 or 16 people. And I had enough to give everybody leftovers to take home. So, and we had some leftovers as well. And so you just need the pork shoulder, but um, two oranges, limes, uh, white onion, jalapeno, garlic, Mexican oregano, and some other spices. I think cumin is one of them. And you just assemble it in the crock pot and cook it on low for 10 hours. And then in the morning, um, you'll see when I shred it up and then I'm gonna crisp it up in a pan so that way it's not just like super tender, it's more crispy and has that texture. And you squeeze the oranges over the top and this is plenty juice just for this whole entire piece of meat. Actually, a lot of the fat is gonna render out of there and it's gonna be very juicy and flavorful. next day the morning of the party and I just needed to frost the cake everything that I could do ahead of time I did I have not told you guys this but I, I don't think I have but I am an event coordinator and so my tip to you if you're throwing a party is to do everything in advance that you can like if you need to chop produce or you need to make a dip or anything like that do it the night before or the week before do everything in advance that you can because there's nothing worse I mean we've been there we've all been there when you are getting ready and people are like arriving to your party or you don't even have time to get ready you barely have time to shower and you show up with wet hair at your party so everything you can do in advance do it another tip is if you decide to make this cake or any cake for that matter is to definitely beef up the middle layer of frosting because i didn't put as much coconut frosting in the middle and i definitely needed more and i ended up having some leftover so that's definitely something a lesson learned that i will remember for next time and then i'm just using my handy dandy that because I don't have packing bags, like I said, to just kind of make a design around the top and the bottom of the cake. And again, it wasn't the most pretty, it wasn't the most beautiful Pinterest worthy cake, but my father-in-law loved it. Everybody did. I just snipped the tip off and it worked just fine. And um, as far as like decorations and stuff like that, I know like a lot of channels, when they're doing party prep, they have the balloon arch, they have all kinds of decorations. And that's just not something that we really about our family it's more about spending time together and celebrating of course with the kids like I will do more of like a theme but for my father-in-law like he doesn't care about the decorations like he's just happy to spend time with us we had a pool party we had tacos and everything was great and they, everyone loved the cake there was no leftovers of this so that was great and now I'm just finishing up the carnitas it's about an hour before everybody arrives and so I'm taking it piece by piece and shredding it up I'm removing the fat and any weird pieces I'm also going to remove the bone and like I said I'm going to freeze that so I can make some ham broth later 
and maybe use it like for some split pea soup or lentil soup is really good as well. And then you want to save as much of the liquid from the crock pot as possible because I'm going to fry up the meat and it kind of dries it out a little bit and I'm going to add the liquid back into the crock pot to keep it warm and juicy and flavorful later. And then I'm just going to fry it up in half oil, half butter. Um, I like the butter for flavor and for a little bit of fat, but if you're frying food, you can't just fry it in butter because it has a lower burning point. It will burn. So if you ever want to use that, then definitely add a little bit of oil and that will help. And I'm just going batch by batch and doing a little bit at a time to crisp this meat up. You don't want to do too much because it will just steam the meat and it won't crisp up the way you want. And I'm going to add it back to the crock pot so that way um, it will stay warm and I can keep it on warm for everyone to eat for lunch. And as I was making this, I was just thinking about my grandparents. I am half Mexican and growing up, um, unfortunately, my grandma has passed away now. My grandpa's 93, so he's not hosting anybody. But they would host parties that they'd call carnitas and they'd make a big pot. And their big copper pot was like $3,000 where they make their meat and um, just have their friends over, have mariachis come, and just party. And so it just brought back those memories, and I was laughing, thinking to myself, like, I'm making it in a crock pot. Like, my grandma is probably up there, like, what the heck? <laughs> but it came out very good. I would recommend this. I guess the cast iron, like, it can be traditional, but it's not the traditional way that you would make carnitas. And then um, my, my husband and his family, they like the street taco variety. We live in California, like I said. And so traditionally out here, you just put the um, diced onions, which I'm dicing up now, and I'm going to mix with some cilantro and the lime and salsa on top. Now, where I grew up, I grew up in Texas, and so I love Tex-Mex. And um, so I love like the lettuce, the tomato, and all that on my tacos. Um, on carnitas, I actually do prefer it this way now. So I guess I've converted, but I have lived in California for most of my life now. And, um, yeah, I just, it just brought back some happy memories and it was a really good time with our family and we had a lot of fun. Everybody loved it, like I said. And so that's all that matters is that that's just like the most important thing to me. You know, just everyone's having a good time. Everyone's happy. Everyone's fed and, I just love entertaining for that reason. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for hanging in here with me while I cooked like a bunch of food. I cleaned a little bit. Hopefully in the next one I'll have some more cleaning motivation for you, but I'm just going to get this stuff in the fridge while I wait for everybody to show up. But if you made it this far, thank you again so much for watching today's video. I hope that you got some inspiration out of it and some motivation at least, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.